after taking a deep look at the dyeing application of reactive dyes, today we will be talking about yet another type of synthetic dye which is sulphur dyes and we will see how they are used in dyeing. Whether we use natural fibers like cotton, silk or wool or we use any kind of synthetic fiber which we have learnt quite in great detail like polyester, polyamide or other types of rayons and nylons and so on. The reactivity of these dyes are quite different. So, that is why they have been classed or classified into different groups. So, once we have taken a look at the reactive dyes, now it is time to talk a bit about the sulphur dyes because this course deals with all types of dyes, not only natural dyes, but also synthetic dyes. But of course, more emphasis is being given on natural dyes for the simple reason that they are the most upcoming dyes that the industry must now adapt. But keeping all that in mind, I still feel that a holistic approach towards the course would demand that another a very deep overview of the other types of dyes must also be made available to you people. So, today we will learn about dyeing application on sulphur dyes or with sulphur dyes. Sulphur dyes are synthetic organic substantiative dyes produced by the thionation or sulphurization of organic intermediates containing nitro or amino groups. So, one thing is clear that the molecule must have either a nitro group or an amino group and the dye is prepared, it is a synthetic dye as the name suggests and it is prepared by the thionation or sulphurization. They are like VAT dyes, highly colored, water insoluble and have to be converted to water soluble substantiative form that is the leuco form before application to textile material. So, by now you would have recalled that VAT dyeing had also gone through similar kind of processing. VAT dye per se are insoluble and then they are solubilized to make it into leuco form which is almost like colorless or it has a discolor and then finally, in that solubilized form it penetrates into the fabric and then it is uh, regenerated into its insoluble form. So, similarly, the sulphur dyes also behave in the same manner. Sulphur dyes are mainly used for dyeing cellulose fibers. Apart from cellulose fibers, they can be also used for dyeing staple fibers and yarns. So, you see that it has also its own range of uh, material that can be dyed with this uh, dye. It, as what I told in the last few classes that dye and uh, the dyeing fiber, their, uh, the, their chemistry must be compatible. Otherwise, the dye uptake will not take place and the fabric cannot be dyed. So, it is important to understand the chemistry of the dye. We already have taken a look at the, uh, uh, the chemistry of the fibers that is polyester, nylon, cellulose, silk, wool and so on and so forth and polyacrylic fibers. We have already covered all that. So, you now understand that the compatibility factor is very important. The structure of the dye must be compatible to the structure of the fi fiber or the fabric. Sulphur dyes are used mainly for dyeing textile cellulosic materials or blends of cellulosic fibers with synthetic fibers such as acrylic fiber, polyamides or and polyester. So, they are good for cellulose, not only for cellulose, but, uh, but also for the blends of cellulose 
and the blends could be with polyester, with polyamide and with polyacrylic uh, fibers. They are used for silk and paper in limited quantities for specific application. Solubilized sulfur dyes are used on certain types of leather. From an application point of view, the sulfur dyes are between VAT direct and fiber reactive dyes. So, if one tries to take an overview as to where are these placed in the industry, the maximum use is of VAT dye, direct dyes and fiber reactive dyes which we have learnt in the previous class. And now comes the another class which is the sulfur dye. So, it is also used for dyeing silk and paper, but in limited quantity. So, what does it come to conclusion from this slide that it is not only used for cotton, but it is also used for cellulosic blends like polyacrylic uh, blend with cotton or polyamide blend with cotton or polyester blend with cotton. So, that means it, it has the ability. Now, you see when we are talking about blends, one thing has to be kept in mind that the dye chemistry remains the same for both the fiber, but for the dye the fabric chemistry changes. So, it has now to deal with two different kinds of uh, material which are compositionally very different or chemically very different. So, how does this dye then start taking up? Because we have taken a look at the mechanism of dyeing of uh, uh, cotton, we have taken a look at the mechanism of dyeing of polyesters, polyamides and um, the polyacrylic fibers. So, now you see that there is a competition if there are two types of fibers, how will this dye now start behaving when it starts penetrating into the fiber which is a blend. So, those things are the intricacies which you should understand because by now you have already understood the dyeing of uh, these uh, different types of synthetic fibers. You have taken a look at other dyes also their chemistry. So, let us try to see how sulfur dyes behave with these cellulosic fibers and blends of cellulosic fibers. What should a sulfur dye have as a salient feature? They give good to moderate fastness and good wet fastness at low cost and rapid, uh, rapid processing. Traditionally, these dyes are applied from a dye bath containing sodium sulfide. However, Development in dyeing techniques and manufacture has led to the use of sodium sulfhydrate, sodium polysulfide, sodium dithionite, thiourea dioxide and glucose as reducing agents. In the reduced state, the dyes have affinity for cellulose and are subsequently exhausted on the substrate with common salt or sodium sulphate that is the globase salt and fixed by oxidation. The range of color covers all hue classification groups except a true red. As a rule, the hues are dull compared with other dye classes. Black is the most important followed by blues, olives and browns. So, you see that if we try to lay, take a look at the sulfur dyes and their properties. They are very good when it comes to light fastness. So, one criteria they definitely fulfill as a dye because they have good fastness. They also have good wet fastness and are very low costing and the process of dyeing is very fast. So, you see even that is very very advantageous for any industrial textile dyeing process. Traditionally, these, apply, uh, these dyes are applied in the dye bath containing sodium sulphide. Now, this is a chemical which needs to be mandatorily added for the solubilization of sulphur dyes. So, that is something very different from what we had learned in when we were doing reactive dyes. However, development in dyeing technique 
Several other reducing agents have also been used over a period of time including glucose, sodium polysulfide, sodium dithionide, thiourea dioxide, sodium sulfohydrate and so on and so forth. Even sodium dithionite is used when VAD dyeing is done with the indigo. So, that is there is some more similarity because the dye has to be solubilized. One thing that VAD dyeing and sulfur dyes have in common or indigo or indigoid dyes and sulfur dyes have in common that they have to they are in insoluble state they have to be solubilized and again insoluble form uh, must be converted. So, this process of solubilization to insolubilization on the surface of the fabric is common to VAD dyeing or indigoid dyes, uh, indigoid dyes and sulfur dyes. In the reduced state the dye has affinity for cellulose. So, once it turns into the solubilized form it can form bonds with the cellulosic fibers or the blends of the cellulosic fibers and that is how it gets into the fiber. Otherwise any insoluble material cannot penetrate into the fiber. So, for that purpose the leucoform is converted and therefore, it is one of the best source of black dyes. Many other colors can be obtained although true red has not been achieved through self dye uh, to through sulfur dyes, but all other colors and preferentially black color has been observed uh, very well and has been obtained uh, in uh, great success. But other like blues, olives and browns also can be obtained from sulfur dyes very readily. How is the sulfur dye actually used? The conversion is, is usually carried out by the treatment with aqueous sodium sulphide solution. I just mentioned a while ago that in the dye bath in order to solubilize sulfur dyes it is important that sodium sulphide solution be present otherwise solubilization will not take place. Since the leucoform has affinity for cellulosic fiber and since they are sensitive to atmospheric oxidation they can be easily oxidized to the parent sulphur dye. So, the first the formation of the leuco and then the oxidation to the uh, you know oxidized uh, state of insoluble sulphur dyes. Thus, they have to be dyed from the aqueous sodium sulphide solution. So, one thing that needs to be remembered is that these dyes cannot be put into the dye bath without adding sodium sulphide solution. So, this is a mandatory chemical when sulphur dyes have to be used for dyeing. Second thing that needs to be remembered is that it is very similar to VAD dyes such as indigoid dyes because even in the case of indigoid dyes the dye is in the insoluble form it has to be solubilized and once it is solubilized it comes to the leuco form and after it has formed the leucoform, it has to be reoxidized on the surface of the fabric. So, this is the chronology of event. So, there is a great deal of similarity. Now, classes of sulphur dyes, let us take a look at how many types of sulphur dyes are available. These classes of sulphur, there are three classes of sulphur dyes. One conventional or water insoluble dyes, one is leucosulfur dyes and the third is the solubilized sulfur dyes. So, there are three classes of sulfur dyes which can be used in the industry and they are conventional or water insoluble dyes. The second one is leucosulfur dyes and the third one is the solubilized sulfur dyes. Now, when we try to take a look at the conventional insoluble sulphur dyes, let us see what uh, how is the method carried out. Conventional sulphur dyes 
are used in this method, they are insoluble or partly soluble in water, they have variable but slight affinity for textile fabric. Before dyeing, the dye are pasted with a little amount of cold water. The required amount of sodium sulphide is added and dissolved by adding water. Boiling for about 10 minutes completes the dissolution process. This is then added to the dye bath with soda ash. Finally, the material to be dyed is entered into the dye bath. So, if a uh, you know a regular insoluble sulphur dye is used, this is the procedure that needs to be followed in order to prepare the dye bath. The first thing that one has to do is to make a paste of the dye with the help of water, but it is insoluble in water. So, it is just going to be a kind of a physical mixture. To that uh, sodium sulphide is added so that the dissolution takes place and this is almost uh, going to take 10 to 15 minutes after which the whole solution is poured into the dye bath and then can now be used for the dyeing of the fabric and the fabric can be entered into it. What let us take a look at the properties of the sulphur dyes. From the name itself, it is clear that these dyes contain little amount of sulfuric acid. The fiber those can be dyed by these materials are viscose, staple fibers, yarn, any material which give a resin finish or silk finish etcetera. These dyes have an excellent light fastness. So, that is a very big advantageous property that sulphur dye has. Dyeing temperature is between 80 to 95 degrees optimum, but sometimes at cold temperature also dyeing can be carried out. It is good uh, soluble in sodium disulphide, it has a good exhaustion, its dyeing rate is moderate, it is soluble in water only when it is dissolved in sodium sulphide and make a rapid black on cellulose materials, sometimes create direct prints on cellulose. So, it has several several advantageous situation which the other classes of dyes lacked and therefore, if one has to obtain black, one has to preferably use the sulphur dyes. And you have seen that it has a very good fastness, light, light fastness property. So, that makes it a very good candidate as a dye in the dyeing industry. Plus, it has good exhaustion that means the dye is not wasted. The dye effluent left behind in the dye bath is, has very minimum amount of dye left behind. So, that is and the dyeing rate is moderate, it is not slow, it is not very high and at the same time you know you see that the temperature at which the dyeing is being done is only 80 to 95 degrees which is, is slightly below the boiling point of water and such a dyeing procedure is not very energy intensive. So, even there it has an advantage. Application of sulphur dyes, where all it can be applied, where boiling fastness is not very important, but a good wash uh, is important of dull brown khaki color clothes, sulphur dyes are used. The most friendly sulphur dye among all the members of the sulphur acid dye family is sulphur black. It shows affinity for linen and jute fibers as well. It works excellent with, uh, with the black color and gives excellent color and light fastness. So, you see when boiling any material is not going to create any problem for the fiber. From the fiber point of view, if it can withstand 80 to 90 to 100 degrees centigrade, there using a sulphur dye is very, very good and particularly if one wants to get that jet black, 
it is not possible to get black color in natural dyes or in reactive dyes or in any other series of dyes that we have done as uh, you know uniformly and as deep a color of the black as what can be obtain, obtained through the sulfur dyes. So, that is where it has an edge over the other series of dyes. Sulfide dyes are dyes from a dye bath containing common salt and sodium sulfide. This mixture is oxidized with some oxidizing agent in a fresh bath. The oxidizing agents are sodium bichromate or hydrogen peroxide. So, when the leucoform has to be reoxidized, these are the two uh, most common uh, oxidizing agent one is hydrogen peroxide and the other one is sodium bichromate, but preferably sodium peroxide is more advantageous because it does not liberate any harmful element or material. When hydrogen peroxide dissociate it gives water and nascent oxygen and that nascent oxygen is instrumental in the oxidation of the leucoform. But in the case of sodium bichromate, the chromium metal itself is hazardous. So, therefore, it is preferable to avoid using strong oxidizing agents like sodium bichromate. These dyes are used for jigger or winch and for package dyeing of cotton and viscose rayon. By now you know what the jigger machine looks like, by now you know what a winch machine looks like and in several several types of fiber dyeing we have been talking about winch and jigger again and again. Why? Because for the simple reason that every dye house will definitely have a jigger and a winch machine. There is a possibility that the hang dyeing may be there, may not be there. Other types of sophisticated dyeing machines may be present, may not be present, but these two dyeing machines are definitely available with most of the dye houses and that is why I have emphatically told about that it, the sulphur dye can be used on jigger and winch very easily. You have learned about package dyeing and even it can be used in the form of package dyeing. These dyes are economically beneficial if used for continuous basic dyeing. So, as we already know that they are low cost, therefore it is economical plus it has good exhaustion. So, that also adds on to the economics, it uh, you know uh, is uh, it, it takes lesser time to the rate of dyeing is not, uh, moderate. So, even there it is in the energy saving. So, all these points go to prove that sulphur dyes are very good for industrial processes. Sulphur dyes can give the yellow, orange, brown sulphur dyes belong to this class. The dyes are usually made from aromatic amines, diamines and their acyl and nuclear alkyl derivatives. These may be used in admixture with nitroanilines or nitrophenols or aminophenols to give the de desired shape, shade. The color formed is said to be the result of formation of thiazole chromophore evident in the dye structure. So, what happens is that we can have a variety of sulfur dyes and the shade will, can be altered from yellow to orange to brown simply if the structure is altered and for alteration of the uh, structure, the reaction of aromatic amines or diamines or their acyl derivatives could be done with nitroanilines or nitrophenols or aminophenols. So, as I told you right in the beginning that a sulfur dye must desirably contain a nitro group and an amino group apart from having uh, uh, sulfur uh, in its moiety. Obviously, it has to have a sulfur in the molecule otherwise it will not fall into the category of sulfur dyes. 
investigation into the structure of sulfur baked dye, imidial yellow GG, sulfur yellow 4 by chemical degradation of the dye and confirmatory synthesis of the postulated structures showed that a mixture of 4 dyes were obtained when benzidine and 4,6-methyl-2-benzothiazolol aniline were baked with sulfur. The original British patent of sulfur yellow 4 dates back to 1906. So, you see that it it is that old a dye. In 1906, the dye first sulfur dye was made with the help of benzidine and 4,6-methyl-2-benzothiazolol aniline. This is the structure and so, uh, this benzidine when reacted with this kind of uh, benzothiazolol gave this a uh, very conjugated system. You see there are 4 aromatic rings and you know uh, 4 sulphurs and 2 terminal aminos and so on and so forth. Manufacture of the sulphur bake because you see these are so important uh, dyes and as I told you low cost, good light fastness, very good uh, rate of dyeing and so they fall in a better category of the dyes. Thionation of various aromatic amino or nitro compounds with sulphur was formerly carried out in iron pans shifted with agitators, fitted with agitators and heated by gas fire. However, some bakes be begin to stiffen up as the reaction progresses preventing further agitation. Consequently, the baking process is not uniform throughout. Baking pans have been replaced by more efficient iron cylinders rotating bakers. The bakers usually of 500 to 1000 kilogram capacity are heated directly by gas jets or hot flue gases from a fire source and rotated at an RPM of 2 to 10 on hollow end turinous supported by self aligning bearing rollers. The off gases from the reaction are led through a catch pot to a scrubber unit containing caustic soda solution. So, now you see the whole process was first done in a bake, uh, baking machine, but that baking machine was making the whole thing settle. Now, if it uh, the whole process settles up, there would not be any mixing of the reactants. As a result, the thionation will not take place properly of the aminophenols and the nitrophenols. So, in order to you know have a more mechanized machine, these bakers were re replaced by rotatory bakers. And in that rotatory bakers, the one could stuff in as much as 500 kilogram to 1000 kilogram material and they were rotated at a 2 to 10 rpm. So, very slow rotation, but yet the mixing of this uh, sulfur uh, uh, for the process of thionation can be carried out. And then you know it was kind of warmed up by flue gases and then these gases were kind of trapped into the caustic so soda ash uh, solution because you know any um, harmful sulfurous compound should not escape. It can cause uh, hazard uh, for the uh, factory workers. So, that is how they were uh, the scrubber unit containing caustic soda solution would have tra trapped these uh, uh, escaping gases. Sulfur and sodium hydrogen sulfur for recycling were then processed. The bakers are rotated until the raw dye is ground to a powder. It is discharged and standardized to strength and shade purified by solution in either caustic soda or sodium sulphide. Insoluble material is removed by filtration. The liquor are evaporated to dryness on a steam heated rotating single or double drum dr dryer of the dye is precipitated by the addition of acid or sodium bisulfite or by blowing air into the alkaline brew. Hydrogen sulfide generated is absorbed. 
in the caustic soda solution. So, it is this that I was referring to that all the sulfur which has got converted into hydrogen sulfide must be strapped because it not only creates a bad smell, but it is also harmful for inhalation. The precipitated product is filtered, washed and air blown dry before discharge. The final drying is usually carried out in fan assisted steam heated air ovens. So, you see that the whole process is very simple. So, that is the reason why sulfur dye production is low, so the dye cost is also low and the only effluent in the process or hazardous chemical that comes out is the hydrogen sulphide which is trapped in sodium sulphide. And even the recrystallization and purification is very easy as what you heard just now. Because uh, the, if the process is simple, the cost will automatically be low. If the uh, process of making the dye is very complicated and requires many ingredients, the cost will automatically go up. Now, let us take a look at the application path. Sulfur dyes are applied to leucoform. In this form, the dye has affinity for the fiber. After the dye is completely absorbed by the fiber, it is re-oxidized in situ. In dyes such as the bright blues which contain quinonimine group, further reduction takes place in a manner similar to the reduction of the keto group in the VAT dyes. The sulfur dyes are classified according to application method and the structure of the intermediates into ordinary or conventional dyes, leuco or pre-reduced dyes and thiosulfonic derivatives of conventional dyes that is the solubilized dyes. We have already seen this, we have already learned that there are three types of dyes, sulfur dyes based on their structure and on the way they can be applied and one is the conventional insoluble dye, the other one is the soluble leuco dye and the third one is the solubilized sulphur dyes which can be used in fibers not only, not only reduce the for the purpose of dyeing cotton, but also for the blends of cotton. Now, let us take a look at the reducing agents that can be used. The reducing agents traditionally employed with sulphur dyes is of course, sodium sulphide, but sodium sulphide, sodium bisulphide together with small quantities of alkali such as sodium carbonate or sodium hydroxide is of common or wide use. The dye baths prepared in this way are less alkaline than those with sodium sulphide alone which facilitates the rinsing of the dyed goods. Effluent control has resulted in a search for alternative reducing agents. So, commonly the reducing agent is a uh, sodium sulphide or sodium bisulphide, but other in combination with alkali, mild alkali like sodium carbonate can also be used. And it is all with a view that the effluent should have minimum amount of any hazardous chemical and therefore, newer and other alternative reducing agents are also being searched for this process. But one can not you know replace sodium sulphide, why because sodium sulphide is what dissolves the sulphur dyes. Other reducing agents that have been used, alkaline sodium dithionite. This was also used in VAD dyes as I referred uh, uh, sometimes back. Sodium hydrosulfide can be used with some sulphur dyes, particularly the blues, but over reduces red brown such as uh, sulphur brown 12, sulphur red 6 and similar types. So, one has to make the choice of the reducing agent, so that it should not interfere with the dye. Alkaline sodium uh, formaldehyde sulfoxalate has been also employed with blues, but has the same drawback. So, one has to weigh 
which reducing agent is going to work and will not hamper the dye per se. Glucose and sodium hydroxide in almost boiling solution have been proposed for solubilized or dispersed sulfur dyes. Small amounts of sodium sulfide or sodium dithionide together with glucose and sodium hydroxide assist the reduction, but the pH should be maintained above 10.5 throughout the dye. So, there are possibilities of using a combination also. One can use sodium hydroxide along with glucose and with that small amount of dosing of sodium dithionite and sul sodium sulphide for solubilization is possible. But the main issue is that the pH should be maintained at 10.5 and therefore, these reducing agent have to be used in permutation and combination in order to use sulphur dyes very successfully. Dyeing the blends with sulphur dyes, that is what is the biggest challenge, why? Because I clearly made you understand that now we have two different chemistries happening. One chemistry of the sulphur dye with cellulose and the other chemistry with the blended fiber. Blends of polyester with cotton or viscose are first dyed with dispersed dyes and then with sulphur dyes. So, dispersed and sulphur dyes can also be applied simultaneously in pad dry thermo fix which we learnt yesterday and chemical reduction pad steam sequence. In this case, the sulphur dyes cannot be used in their reduced form because of the effect of the sodium sulphide on the dispersed dyes. Therefore, this method is confined to the solubilized sulphur dyes or sulphur dyes in the dispersed form. Solubilized sulphur dyes can also be applied without reducing agents. The dye together with urea and thiourea or similar compounds is padded directly on 100 percent cotton, then dried and thermofixed and between 150 to 175 degrees. In case of polyester cotton, suitable dispersed dye can be added to the padding liquor and the thermofix at high temperatures together with solubilized sulphur dyes. So, you see that these dyes cannot be used in isolation. When there are blends, first a dispersed dye must be uh, used or in combination, but when dispersed dye and sulphur dye are used together, then sodium sulphide cannot be used. So, there has to be alterations in the process according to the need of the uh, fiber. If the fiber is pure, there is no problem in using sulphur dyes and not very high temperature is required. But when there are blends, temperatures like 150 to 175 degrees have to be brought about and it is, it is far beyond the boiling point of water and therefore, very high heating is required for these blends when sulphur dyes are used. So, this is what the chemistry of sulphur dyes is all about and the dyeing process certainly is very different from what we have learned so far.